everybody. Joe Scott here with HigherHertz.com and welcome to another fun-filled episode of How to Play the Five-String Banjo. Before we get started, please make sure to click the subscribe button along with that little bell. If you do so, then you will get notification for future videos. So let's get started. So in today's episode, uh, it's just what the title is, Let's Get Pickin'. What that means is we're gonna take everything we've learned so far and actually play our first song. But let's start with a quick review here, and that is making sure, like we always say, the banjo's in the right playing position, you are relaxed, your hand is uh, over the arm, your right hand's over the armrest, your wrist is broken, your pinky's mounted to the head of the instrument, and your left hand is ready to, to fret the banjo. That's super important. Just get comfortable, sit up straight, breathe. No, don't forget to breathe because um, that's gonna help you along the way as well. In today's lesson, we're gonna be learning those uh, three of the four rolls that we learned. The forward roll, two, one, five, two, one, five, two, one. The, on the beat roll, three, two, five, one, three, two, five, one. The inside out roll, three, two, one, five, one, two, three, one. The Foggy Mountain roll we'll uh, use on a future uh, tune that we'll be learning, actually the famed Foggy Mountain Breakdown that most every five string banjo player um, has a goal to learn that one. Get comfortable. Uh, go ahead and warm up a little more on those rolls. You can always just pause the video and, uh, and warm up a little bit more before we get started with the task at hand here. So first, before we actually start the song, we want to learn three basic chords. And these three chords are in literally thousands of not only bluegrass, but folk, Americana, country. Uh, they are just the simplest of all the chords. And for the banjo, it's super easy. And so starting with chord number one, if you notice on this diagram, you see those square boxes. Those square boxes represent the neck of your banjo. So if you notice, uh, it says strings. And what that means is it's as though the banjo is turned on end and you're looking at the first four frets of your banjo. So the numbers on top of that graph, one, two, three, four, represent the first, second, third, fourth string on your banjo. And then the other way, the one, two, three, four on the side of the, of the diagram are your frets, number one, two, three, four. Now, the number one on the second string first fret means that I want you to use your number one finger to pick uh, to fret that with. So that first diagram is simply telling you to play your second string first fret with your number one finger. And again, you can pause this video, read the text there if any of this is confusing, and then move on. The three most basic chords in bluegrass are G, which in this tuning on the banjo, it's already a G. So that's easy, open, no pressing of any frets is a G. That next chord you notice is a C, and that's got your number one finger on the second string first fret, your number two finger on the fourth string second fret, and your number three finger on the first string uh, second fret as well. And that's what the C chord looks like. Remembering to use your left hand like a clamp, make sure, as we've talked in the past, keep that wrist broken and curl around. Now in this particular exercise, that's the full C chord, but because we're not gonna be playing the fourth string, you actually wouldn't have to push down on that. That's optional at this point. Uh, later, you will be using that quite a bit, but for now, you can either play it as is or just don't worry about placing that second finger on the fourth string second fret. The third chord we're gonna be using is a D seventh, and that one's showing to put your number one finger on the second string first fret and your number two finger on the third string second fret, right? So open is G, C, and D seventh. And if you notice that diagram that says G above it, there's no, nothing on that because all those th four five strings open make a G chord already. So those are the three chords. So at this point, I would want you to just pause the video and sit there and really get these chords under your hand. And the best way to do that is to just focus, strum the G a few times, make your C chord with or without that middle finger, it doesn't matter, and then lift and just practice going back and forth and grabbing it. Picture in your mind's eye what it looks like. 
okay? Remember how in previous lessons we talked about separating the two hands? We've mostly been working on our right hand, but now we're gonna to start to work on the left hand a little more. So C, G, C, G, C. When that starts feeling comfortable, now let's introduce that D seventh. So G, D seventh, G, D seventh. Just back and forth, really get comfortable with getting those shapes on the fingerboard. Then when you've got the three chords, just sit there and go through G, C, D seventh, G, G, C, D seventh, G. Then you can turn it around, D seventh, C, G. Doesn't matter what order right now. Just keep going through them. Once you start feeling comfortable with all that, then you can unpause and meet me at our first song. All right, so here we go. Uh, finally getting down to actually playing some music. And uh, this first tune is just called Get Pickin' because it's getting your right hand picking combined and coordinated with your left hand. Before we really get into it, you might wanna just take a moment, pause the video again, look at the music there or the tablature. And remember the tablature we learned in the previous lesson, the zeros mean you're picking the banjo open on the, those strings. The top line represents string number one, uh, the second line string number two, and so on. The zero means you're striking them open. And now we've introduced, if you notice on top of the music, it says G. That's the G chord. There's two measures of G and both measures are playing the forward roll. So the first two measures of this song are very easy. You simply play the forward roll twice. Two, one, five, two, one, five, two, one. Again, five, two, one, five, two, one. Now measure three, notice it says C. So now we're gonna go play that C chord that we just learned, all right? But now we're playing the inside out roll instead of the forward roll. Measure number three with the C chord sounds like this. And you just do that once. And then fourth measure, we're at a G chord, and that's the inside out roll. Three, two, one, five, one, two, three. And then uh, second line down, it says C again. So with that, you're gonna make your C chord and you're gonna play a forward roll again. Then a G forward roll. And now on this next measure, it says D7. So you're going to play that D7 chord, but this time you're doing the on the beat roll over that. And then the final measure of the sequence is G doing the on the beat roll. So that's a whole lot of notes. So you have the tablature here in front of you. So now it's just gonna be you putting in the time sitting there playing this over and over. Now I'm gonna play the whole thing without interruption a little faster so you can hear what it's going to sound like. Starting from the beginning. So G, it starts two, first two measures are G with a forward roll. It's a whole lot of fun. As you get better and better and smoother and faster at it, it just gets more and more fun. I'll do it for you just a little faster uh, so you can hear what it's gonna sound like. playing music now. So that tune is called Get Pickin'. And that's exactly what I want you to do. Uh, again, a wonderful thing about these YouTube videos is that if anything is confusing, just pause, read, slow down, break it down to its easiest form, and then just keep moving forward. As with all of these, remember, just take it slowly at first. Speed means nothing. If you can't play it slow, uh, and well, you certainly can't play it fast. So the speed will come with time. And, and if you pay attention to playing in time and in good balance, as we've talked about, your picking's gonna sound great and people are gonna be compelled to listen to you. 
All right, so that's it for this episode. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And if you have not done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the subscribe button. Also hit that little bell so you get notifications for future videos. Uh, also, please comment. We, uh, we love your comments. Positive, negative, it doesn't matter. If you have ideas for other things you'd like to learn, please let us know. And remember, practice, practice, practice. And I look forward to seeing you at the next five-string banjo lesson.